Hi there, and welcome to episode 120 of the Noodlecast. Brian yelled at me and says that I blow out everybody's ears when I start talking, so this is my new voice. Yes, just like this. This is our new conversation. With me today is Jason. Jason, say hi to the people. Hello. How there are he you? Is. Hi. Good. Th thank you for asking. Brian is with us as well. He hasn't quit yet. It may change after today. He's, he's as strong into that. I as regret <laughs> saying anything. Uh, uh, it's all your fault, bro. All your fault. Um, yeah. Anyway, what were we talking about? Oh, right. We Water. got movie stuff. Water. Um, we were talking, we were about, talking water. about water. You missed water. that conversation. Um, you might be grateful, though. Um, let us move on through this this day we actually have a couple movies uh that jason and i saw brian yeah. uh did not go the route of the movies this week and that's okay he had other things to watch i've been um, watching some good tv he binged that's he right. binged some tv he did um peaceful jared yeah that's what it is hashtag peaceful jared i should know better to s open my mouth at all and say <sighs> anything i mean you know it's all your fault henceforth i am just controlling the show and not talking in it Oh, we know you're controlling it. In the end, Brian's controlling everything. Got the marionette um, strings. So before we get into movies, though, let's talk some some new stuff here. And uh, we're just going to kind of go in random order here that nobody knows what order we're going to talk about here. Um, so crazy. first thing we're going to talk about, this is going to be Jason's topic. Let's see if Jason knows anything about it. Uh, <laughs> Jason. Yes. So there was some craziness happening in life the past couple weeks that we uh that we have <laughs> heard about statement <laughs> yeah i have to narrow that down jared uh, so apparently uh gamestop uh oh. is worth a lot of money well, right now maybe i don't know i haven't was, been following it i think it's kinda, i don't know did it the bubbles kind of burst at i mean this it's, point, right? it's a bit you know a bit up in um them. the 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 redditors out there caused quite the commotion mm -hmm. in the stock market world um and and in a very quick period of time we have news in regards to the stock market uh scandal of gamestop what are they doing jason already yeah so um we have this obviously crazy story that some people may or may not be aware of where um there's a particular uh, forum of sorts on Reddit. Um, and basically this, this forum is all about, it's like Wall Street Bets, I think is the particular yeah, subreddit. Correct. And they are basically a, a group of like day traders, which is a term that, you know, was popularized in like the mid to late 90s where these kind of people would just, you know, quit their job and just start randomly investing in stocks on their own, you know, not through a broker or like through from their somebody. couch, <laughs> like pretty much like once the Internet was able to allow you to to trade on the exchange, these people were like, you know what, I can I can do this. And some of them are really good at it and became rich. And some of them lost everything and work at Taco Bell trying hey. to bring it all back together. I like Taco good Bell. tacos. Jobs are important. Um, <laughs> Dialing it back. They got the Baja Jones Blast Jones. Mountain Dew, so they're very okay. Oh man, man. it is well. way better from Taco Bell yeah. than it is in a bottle or a can. Yeah, like they did not get yeah, it right when they bottled like it. Fountain soda, right? But that's yeah. another topic. Yeah. So dialing it back to to where we're at here. What were we talking about? Uh, Movies. Keep going. water. GameStop, <laughs> water. Uh, as a company, has been like kind of a train wreck for the last couple of years. You know, the the world is changing. And, you know, over the last several years, the adoption of digital media has, has slowly gained more and more traction. We see it today with the movies that we review and watch. A lot of it, a lot of our consumption of media is digital. Netflix slowly, you know, they started as a disc exchange rental program. You know, you'd get a DVD and eventually a Blu-ray or, you know, I don't know if they dabbled into video games so much, uh, but. At one point, game that fly. was their that was their main thing. They'd send you a DVD or two, you'd watch it, drop it in the mail. They'd send you the next one on your list. And over time, you know, they began to host content digitally. And now, you know, they they like split off the DVD business basically to just let it eventually die. Can and you have still gone, get DVDs? 
they still have it, but it's it's like a separate entity now. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm sure their revenue continues to plummet year over year because everybody's kind of moving on to the the streaming kick. And every mm-hmm. person that creates content, you know, all of the the media companies and studios, they're all popping up their own shops. You know, we've seen it over the last couple of years with Disney Plus and now Peacock and Hulu and you know this myriad of of places. But so basically, that's what GameStop has been experiencing. Their profit has always come from, you know, used things that people traded in, but people aren't buying things, so they don't trade anything in. So their profits have, you know, been struggling to to capture what they had 10 years ago. Bring in Wall Street bets. So they have noticed that this stock was being traded in a way where basically people were buying up um, stocks and, and trying to do what's called shorting, which is basically, it's it's a way of manipulating the market so that you can basically sell it while borrowing it and make a profit off of expecting the company to take a dive. Uh, so basically, you're betting that the company's going to fail, and if you're right, you profit a large amount. And these people realized that the shorting of GameStop was something like, a, you know, 200% or some ridiculous number, basically meaning that people were trading in a number of stocks more than actually exist in the real world. So like if there were 200 shares of stock in existence, there's like 400 of them being traded, <laughs> which isn't possible in reality. So that means if they drove the price up, the people that had these theoretical stocks would be forced to sell it because basically they're kind of borrowing a share. And if they don't sell it soon enough, they'll be forced to sell it for a higher and higher price to pay back who they're borrowing it from, which is what created this kind of problem because a lot of hedge funds were the ones doing this. And the ethos of these people on this Reddit forum were like, listen, if we all just throw our money into it and just sit on it, you know, we're not going to sell, then these people are eventually going to be forced to because there's certain thresholds where they're just, they're required to kind of like pay it back or whatever. It gets more complicated. But basically, like, it's been this huge thing. If you've watched any amount of news in the last couple of weeks, you've probably at least anecdotally seen something about it. And it's such a crazy wild story that they are now going to make a movie out of it based off of a book that is not even written yet. But the, it's just such a wild story that they've already, you know, a writer that uh, I forget what um, what he wrote prior. There was another big kind of story. That he has a he... co-writing co- credit for uh, the, well, the what eventually became the social network. The social network, um, that's what it was. So he's the the person that's attached to it you know, had worked on that story and, and that movie. And, and now they're being tapped to already begin doing a movie about, you know, this crazy thing. Uh, I don't know if either of you saw the movie, The Big Short. Yes, uh, that's immediately what I thought of when I thought of this. Although so I don't know. A similar I don't situation. know that they're going to go quite like the. Um, it won't be the like comedy that, version of it, but the, the kind of process um, of what happened is yeah. very similar to that. It's basically. You know, people, ga- you know, stock market is basically gambling, although most of the time you're gambling that a company's going to do well. Shorting is the opposite. You're hoping it fails. And if it does, you get your payday. And this was a crowdsourced kind of way where, you know, several, you know, thousand people got together and collectively drove the stock price up, forcing these hedge funds to to sell you know, and and basically creating the stock price to go even higher. And it was like this kind of cascading effect where I think their stock a year ago was trading yeah, around four bucks about a year ago. Uh, and it zoomed up to uh, about 500 or 400, yeah. about $400 per share. Which so um, if, is... If you happen to buy that... <laughs> And According to this well, this article, that was it. It rose over seventeen hundred percent. Yeah, since December. On, on January, let's see, we'll go to January seventh. It was about eighteen dollars. Oh. On yeah, like the the on the twenty seventh, it jumped up to three hundred and forty seven dollars. Yep. So if you had happened to buy a bunch of stock 
you know, at if the you got in early January. on that and if you could get out and before if you it held crashed, it and yeah. bailed before it dove, yeah, like there are people that made tons of money paying off student and, loans, paying off like surgeries, doing all kinds of things. Yeah. And there, there was this, you know, story of some kid that, you know, he the made tax like 32,000 and then he took the money and he bought a bunch of like video games and consoles and donated them to like the local hospital for the, you know, the children's ward. Um, so there's some of that, but yeah, that's a huge piece of it too, is hopefully, you know, people realize that capital gains tax is a thing, you know, short term, not good. So, but, so this movie, um, it's got a lot of like clout attached to it. Um, the, I think people were expecting a lot. The, the writer obviously having written the source material for the social network, which turned out to be like a phenomenal movie and won mm-hmm. tons of awards and all that stuff. Um, the producers attached to this have produced, um, Things like uh, like the the main one that I recognize is Denis Villeneuve's uh, Arrival, mm-hmm. um, but they they produced a whole bunch of other things. Um, the uh, the funny thing about it to me, I didn't know these people even had a a film company, uh, but the Winklevoss twins from yeah. from the Social from Network Facebook. are the are Facebook producing people. this as well. Um, like the real life version, not the Army Hammer uh, clone version. Um, so yeah, I. But what are we expecting from this? So we mentioned the Big Short, and obviously the Big Short took a very uh, comedic portrayal of this, and a lot of fourth wall breaking uh, montage. You know, like very snappy filmmaking. Are we thinking more of like Social Network style, like uh, serious drama kind of thing, be or more? of that i i would expect to see this from the point of view of probably one of the people that spearheaded the the kind of reddit thread i imagine you'd like, see the point of view of the hedge fund people that uh, are watching i'm their sure business there'll be a collective too. you know the, I, I can definitely see like that kind of like you know seinfeld episode multifaceted viewpoint yeah. situation where like you have this situation going on and you'll see it from you know the view of these like random people that are like, they're like pirates storming the beach of, you know, a town to plunder it. You know, they're, they're just like, we can totally blow up these hedge funds and stick it to them. And then, you know, you'll have the hedge fund managers going like, what is going on here? Yeah. You know, because these people literally lost like billions of dollars. Like it, something I like wonder if they can find was wiped out. If, if his story when he's writing the book and then obviously the, the movie that, that comes out of this, if there are individual people that can be keyed in upon, like that you can develop into someone that you would want to watch on screen. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, the, the book aspect of it is probably going to be more grounded in reality than any sort of dramatization that shows up yeah. on the on the movie screen. So it just makes me wonder like how they're going to adapt that and what they're going what they're going to do with that. But I and or who who from the acting world is going to be attached to this. Obviously we just know we just know producers and the writer. We don't know director. They, Obviously it's way too soon for that. But it's hard to say, yeah, because they be kind of need it. to like they need to do the research on, you know, the what, when and where. Yeah. And then once they know like the arc of this craziness, then they can begin to see like, all right, well, who are the characters? What are the interesting people that yeah. we wanna highlight here? See, and I would then, want to see a movie like this, like a film like this, but I would also want to see like the true, the truer documentary style <laughs> yeah. version of this. And like, I'm sure to, we'll to get know both. What really happens? Yeah, because this is like a crazy event that you know it's still kind of playing out now. Because <clears throat> there's been could other potentially stocks. change things down the road, like with if regulations well, or rules change. One of the or big things like with this was you know these people, many of them were using this particular app on yeah. your phone called Robinhood, one of many. Uh, that uh, you know allows you ironic access name to, <laughs> in this instance yeah it allows you to do like no cost trading yeah. you know so you can buy and sell and there there were no fees or whatever um and at one point uh that company uh did not allow them to buy more uh it halted their ability to purchase additional shares which kind of like hampered their plan for seemingly no time, good reason at the time like i don't even know i haven't kept up i mean that's, see if really that's was, part but... of this story that's still going to be sussed out and yeah. you know there's talk that i think it's citadel that may own robin hood and they're like another you know bank investment like td ameritrade or something like that and you know there's part of the thought process is like oh uh, yeah well that company is actually kind of embedded with some of these funds 
that are getting hammered and they're basically like, well, we can't allow people to use our own app to basically cripple us. Yeah. And so, you know, and now that all goes to like, well, isn't that manipulation and not legal? And, you know, granted, the market gets manipulated all the time. But now that, you know, these so-called commoners are doing it, it's a problem. So it's it's going to be really interesting to see how everything, you know, boils out when the investigations dig in and they really figure out what the hell's going on. But yeah, uh, I think it's going to be a good movie no matter what. <laughs> yeah, I'm interested. We'll see what uh, who becomes attached to it and directing wise and also starring in it. I'm, I'm curious to see like how that how that unfolds. But... Well, I'd seen uh, a name already attached to it. Um Oh shoot! What's his name from all the other Netflix movies that have come out? Noah um, Centino or um, for directing? No, no actor. Hmm. Um, and it that may have just been a, a very Hot vague dogs. rumor. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know for sure, but uh, I mean, it's still kind of early. Like, I mean, the the events are still unfolding. I see that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I think it's it's going to have a, a long tail before we actually get sure you know, uh, people pin down to it yeah but uh it, you know this is this falls in the same line and as you guys were kind of talking but my first thought's always been the wolf of wall street mm. yeah not necessarily in that style but that whole that was to me an exciting wall street movie i enjoyed it i've actually never seen a big short um but Wolf of Wall Street was one that always came to my mind when I first heard about all this going on. And actually, Jordan Belf Belfort Belfont um, has actually commented on it as yeah. well. He's put out a, a, his thoughts on it. So I thought that was interesting. Um, but uh, anyway. Um, so, yeah, we'll keep you kids posted when we know more about how this one comes comes up and what's going on with it. Uh, Brian. Um, yes. Star Wars, man. Tell us, tell us the new Star Wars news that we have. So we've been waiting a long time and we've heard various things about like, I think at one point it was like almost close to completion and they're doing reshoots and all that stuff. But um, the Obi-Wan series with its new director and, and newly written script and same actor as Obi-Wan um, is actually going to begin filming. And it's going to begin filming in the late spring, according to Ewan McGregor. Um, and he mentioned in this that they're shooting in L.A. They're not shooting it on location in Tatooine. Um, what? Or Tunisia, for, for that matter, which is like where the real Tatooine is. Um, but they are they are going to be using the stagecraft technology that uh, Man the Mandalorian show has kind of pioneered and really made into like a huge thing. Um, and if you're not familiar with it, uh, it is like this, instead of just your typical blue screen or green screen that you're acting in front of, it is a screen where they like just project an entire background of, you know, wherever you're at. If you're on, it's supposed to be on a desert planet in a galaxy far, far away, that's where you are. And it's, and it's synced up with like lights that are hitting your face. So everything kind of feels like you're really actually there instead it's of like just the standing in front of a, Star Trek. It kind of. I mean, yeah. it's it's a pretty impressive. It has its own um sort of, you know, behind the scenes thing of like how it works uh, that you'd normally see for like a movie or TV show just for the just for the stagecraft technology. So it's really cool. And there's probably going to be a lot more shows and movies and things like that starting to use that technology going forward. Um but Obi-Wan obviously will be the next one as well. Um and I Obi don't think I realized that's how Mandalorian was filming. Oh yeah, that was a that was a big more about a that. big deal to to show off the technology. I think with the, and all the behind the scenes stuff. But um, hmm. yeah, and it is being you know what I didn't watch that. I do want to see that show that behind the scenes show that they had. They have it for both seasons on... now. I think right. For, yeah, I need to that. watch yeah. that. I need to watch that. Um, and Obi Wan is being directed by Deborah Chow. Um, Deborah Chow did two episodes of Mandalorian. Um, she had a cameo. Did she have a cameo? She was one of the TIE fighters or the um, X-Wing fighters. Okay. Um, uh, when he was uh, being chased for season one. She's, to remember. Um, she's done a lot of other TV, American Gods, Men in the High Castle, Better Call Saul, Snowfall, Fear the Walking Dead, Rain. Um, like it's it's crazy the, the amount of credits that she has. And um, Ewan McGregor 
says that she's a brilliant director. She's really looking forward to working with her. So looks like we're all set for Obi-Wan to start filming and maybe we'll see it. Uh, 2022. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. I'm really excited about this show. Um, for a couple reasons. One, obviously, because uh, you and McGuig- McGuigger? Mm-hmm. McGuigger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> McGuigger. You and McGuigger. You and McGregor. Um, was pretty fantastic as as Obi Wan. Like I I loved his his that for him in that role. Um, and then they're also bringing back Hayden Christensen. Um, yes, as Darth Vader, and I'm I'm kind of excited to see him uh, bring this role back and and uh, in it. So this will be a, a fun show for sure. This would be a fun show for sure. Um, I'd like to see I, Hayden get some uh, redemption for sort of like how his performance was perceived and and I guess at on, on some level his performance wasn't all that great but certainly doesn't deserve like the the hate that he got for it I think and then Yeah, like, I don't think he deserved that. But hate I think having a new production having not having it be George Lucas, you know, behind the camera directing his, his scenes the way that he does cuz notoriously not very good um with actors in that standpoint so um I really looking forward to see how he does in a character that he's already been under the hands of under the hands of somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think that what Disney has been able to accomplish with the Mandalorian, I have really high hopes of what they're going to accomplish with Obi-Wan Kenobi, as well as the remainder of the all the, the shows shows. that we know are coming. Yeah. yeah. I just. Uh, uh, I am at this point in time, I am just optimistic about anything Star Trek slash Marvel slash Disney. Like, ex- I just excuse you Star Wars. Why did I say Star Trek? I don't know. I, don't know. I watched a Star Trek episode Hopeful. today. Does that count? Um, no. Star episode? Wars cats, yeah, no. Star Wars, Marvel and Disney. Like, I'm I'm just. I, whatever they say me. they're going to do. <laughs> you cut me deep with that one. You'll survive. You knew what I meant. He's it wearing wasn't, a Star Wars shirt. Not only it wasn't, that. Just, it wasn't like I like don't know the difference between the two. It was just R2 a slip of the tongue. The oh my gosh. Calm down. You, R2 Holy cow, you guys are judging you. Ugh. Easy, cowboys. Um, it was a slip. That's all. I know the difference. Um, <laughs> but I just, I'm, I'm, they're good. What, whatever they tell me they're going to do, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm excited for that. Whatever that is, I'm excited for it. Um, I just, I trust them at this point uh, and what they're capable of. And I know people have have some very mm, touchy feelings in regards to Disney's uh, control of Star Wars, but uh, uh, I personally am not one of those. I am not one of those. Yeah, but, Yeah, this will be good. This will be a good one. Um. Yeah, Obi Wan. It's coming, kids. It's coming. <laughs> um. So. Awkward. Um. So we got nominations for Golden Globe. We got a um, nominate. We got a Golden Globe Globe nomination. We did. <laughs> I I didn't. I didn't know how else to break honored. it to you guys. Um, and so I just decided to throw it out here on the show. Um, well, just to, breaking it's amazing. news, people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we we have we, nomination. Particularly um, to the Golden Globes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They multiple nominations. Shocked. Not just one. Multiple. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about some of these. Now, obviously, the Golden Globes are a little different than some of the other one award shows because it deals both in TV as well as movie. And so... Um, we'll maybe talk about some of the TV ones, but we're not going to go into all the all of them. Um, I, the first one, actually, I do want to mention here is a TV because it's actually got a couple shows in it that I know are really talked about quite a bit. Um, and that's the best television series in the musical or comedy. Um, few nominations you have in there. You have Emily in Paris, which I actually don't know anything about. That's a Netflix show that I've never even seen pop up in my the only reason i know that is because there was an article about the title and how you're not supposed to pronounce it emily in paris because it's a it's a rhyme so it's emily in paris like if you were pronouncing it like a french person oh okay all right that's the only reason i know about the the show (laughs) interesting fair enough 
Um, so you've got that one, and then you've also got uh, the flight attendant, which is um, the TV show on HBO Max with um, uh, Kaylee. Um, I, I can never pronounce Cuoco. her last name. Is it Cuoco? Cuoco? Um, sure. Who Bang. was on Big Bang Theory for all those years, and so that's kind of where she she branched out from there after the show ended. Um, the Great, which I'm not familiar with on Hulu, uh, and then you've got. T- Shit's Creek, which is I've heard of that. Shit's Creek that. is massive. Um, uh, like I know, most people I know have seen this. Show. I've watched a lot of um, it. My wife has watched all of it. I've watched. Some. My wife is was addicted to it. Um, her friends were addicted to it. Um, it, the things I've seen, there are memes, there are sayings. It's it's yeah. very very well. Um, well enjoyed by by many people. This um this next one's your baby though, Jared. Which this is and the last one's my well, baby. I assume you want to talk about um, it. Well, no, actually, Shit's Creek. I think is I if I were to bet, I bet Shit's Creek wins this one. Yeah. Shit's Creek is over. Um, the season the the show has ended. If only because and, it's more widely viewed, probably because it. Uh, um. Yeah. Probably. You're probably right on that. Um. But but yes, Ted Lasso. Um. Is on a Apple TV. Um. If you have not seen Ted Lasso go do it trust me if you've never trusted me with anything else in your entire life and we haven't tr- and you haven't trust me with ted lasso um it is it is about a uh an american football coach um out of can our wichita state um ted lasso who gets hired by a an english um football soccer um football. Uh, premier league team and it goes through this concept. I hope there's a good of, reason for that. And that wasn't there is, like a mistake. There is. Uh, well, the reason is, and it's not, I mean, it's it's in the first episode, so it's not taking anything away from it. Uh, the owner of it is, um, the, the, the owner lost the team in a divorce to his wife. So the wife is now the owner of it. And she's doing everything she can to tank it. A, uh, this team. Major league situation. And, yes. Yeah. Yes. With that said, it's the, the story and the way it goes is amazing. It's hilarious. It brought tears to my eyes at points. This show is amazing. <laughs> Go watch it. Trust okay. me. You need Apple TV on Plus one. Um, yes. You do have to have Apple TV Plus. You do. Uh, anyway, so you've got that one. And then if you actually go down another one, a um, couple other ones, actually, in the, the, the next category, best performance by an actor in a television series drama. Um, you've got quite a few in here as well that, I, that I've seen and that I, I think may, may very well um, have a chance to win. Uh, Jason Bateman in Ozark. I've heard nothing but good things about Ozark. I haven't actually watched it. Um, that's on Amazon Prime, I think. It's on or Netflix. Netflix. Um... I actually, it's a little overhyped for me. I'd seen it all. Um, okay. Hmm. I think it gets a little too um, unbelievable at, at times. Oh, okay. It's trying to be like a Breaking Bad type thing, but I think it goes a little bit into the, um, yeah, I don't know. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Josh O'Connor in The Crown, which is on Netflix. And I know that's one that is very, very popular. Again, another one my wife is is huge in and uh, many people in her circle and, uh, you know, uh, and generation circles, if you will, outside of that, I know, watch it. I um, mean, it's about the, it's about uh, Queen Elizabeth, essentially. Um, and oh, so that, a, that gets- multiple uh, queens or whatever, like it goes through the years like decades does it i thought mm-hmm. it i thought it only stayed with queen elizabeth mm-hmm. from the beginning i, I mean she's so. obviously been in multiple seasons i guess of that's it. true it's different actresses playing her and it's whatnot, different actresses because yeah. it's taking a generational approach but it is uh it is her then you got bob odenkirk in better call saul which people are i, I feel like he's gotta, I, having not seen any of the other ones though i feel like he's got to walk away with that one though and it, it just feels like very his, possibly you know it's been a while word. since i've seen a season of better call Saul. I saw like the first one or two seasons. And then just for some reason, I I didn't circle back to it and it was very, very good. So, and it, it just builds every season just builds. Everything I've heard about it is like, it's just got better. So yeah, Yeah. that's what I've heard too. Um, And then you've got uh, Al Pacino in hunters. Um, Hunters was a great show. I watched that on Amazon prime. Um, It's about um, 
uh, the 1970s about these Nazi hunters um, that tried That's to right. find the Nazis who escaped and came to the U.S. and and uh, infiltrated the government and different Is as- that other a, aspects. Another of Apple, Amazon. Oh, that one's it's Amazon. On Amazon. Okay, that's Amazon yeah. Prime. Yeah. Okay. And then lastly, you got Matthew Rice and Perry Mason. Um, and Perry Mason again, another show that I've heard good things about. I think Brian, you were talking about that, weren't you? Didn't you say you watched it? I I was in. I never actually did catch it, but I was interested in watching it. Um, that's on hbo now yes um, but uh, that was that was the other one um if we slide down a little bit further on the this list here you get best director motion picture um this is a very interesting category from a standpoint is we have kind of a first um if you remember the past several years um female directors have been um snubbed if you will um for this award um uh, no movies um directed by females were were put up for the golden globes uh, this year, out of the five, three of them are female, um, which is which is very good and, and interesting. Um, you've got um, Emerald Fennell, um, who did Promising Young Woman, which is actually one of the movies I'm going to review uh, later today uh, or tonight. Uh, David Fincher in Mank, which Brian had seen and, and talked to us about a couple weeks back. Uh, Regina King, One Night in Miami. Again, another one Brian um, discussed, and, and uh, mm-hmm. Brian really enjoyed that one. Jason did too. And, oh, that's right, Jason. I forgot <laughs> you did watch that one as well. I'm sorry. I did forget that you watched that one. Um, Aaron Sorkin on Netflix, The Trial of the Chicago 7, which Brian reviewed. Brian I, did you see that one too, Jason? A theme I here. did not. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then you've got Chloe Zhao. Um, in Nomad Land, um, I had, and we didn't see that one. I don't know anything about that one. All um, I know is it has Frances McDormand in it. She's supposed to be really good in this okay. particular movie, and I don't know anything else about it. And I don't even know how to watch it at this point. It may not be widely available yet. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because as I went through this list, several of them don't actually release "quote unquote" until this year from a wide standpoint. Um, yeah. even though they're on last year's list, so they they must have released somewhere. A, a lot of these screened at film scenario. festivals and, and yeah. stuff like that before. Yeah, um, Mad Land is playing in Boston. There you go. Oh, okay, great. Take a drive. Boston. Yeah. Well, um. <laughs> then we go down best actress in a motion picture, musical, or comedy. Uh, you've got uh, Maria Bakalova, who did uh, Borat subsequent movie film. Your favorite. Um, it was an amazingly terrible movie. Uh, <laughs> you didn't even watch more than 10 minutes. I, it's all you needed. Uh, <laughs> Kate Hudson in music. Michelle Pfeiffer in French Exit. Uh, Roseman Pike and I, I Care a Lot. And An- uh, Anya Taylor-Joy and Emma. That's the only one this I know was- other than Borat is Emma. Yeah, exactly. I hadn't heard of the other movies. However, with that being said, um, the actresses, um, you've got some some actresses that have been around for quite some time. Yeah. Um, Kate Hudson, Michelle Pfeiffer and Roseman Pike have all um, been in the, the gig for a period of time and have all done some pretty big things um, throughout um, this. So um, it will be interesting to see who who runs away with that one. Uh, and then go to best action actor in motion picture. Again, starting off here, um, you've got three movies that Brian has uh, at, at least Brian has checked out. And I know Jason's gotten, I think, it one of uh, them. Yeah. Um, you got Riz Am- or best actor in a motion picture drama, Riz Ahmed and Sound of Metal, um, which I know you raved about, Brian. Uh, Chadwick Boseman in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, which both of you saw. The, and without even saying who the other ones are, I would be surprised if Chadwick doesn't win this, um, if for no other reason than posthumously um, uh, receiving the award um, and, and to give him an award. Uh, Anthony Hopkins, The Father, uh, Gary Oldman in Mank, and Tar Raim in, I'm going to mispronounce this, The, the Marturian. The Mauritanian. Mar- Mauritanian something close enough yeah yeah um yeah so I gotta oh, bet I gotta bet Chaswick Bo- Bozeman gets that one uh, I just mean, he did a phenomenal of... job so 
it, 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 yeah, very well might be it, it I've be heard people say it might be his best his best one yet. Um or not yet, but his Ever. best one. Yeah. Um yeah. was that role. Uh going into best television series drama, you've got The Crown, which we talked about. Lovecraft Country, um, which Brian has seen and I'm actually currently watching, and so far it's fantastic. Um, very, very interesting direction on how they take that. Uh, the Mandalorian. I'm a little surprised that fell, fell under drama. Well, because the other yeah, one's musical or comedy, right? And it's not. Yeah, those. I guess they have yeah. weird category systems. Yeah, the things don't always. It's like where do they want to submit it to for yeah. consideration? Um, so yeah, the Mandalorian, Disney Plus, um, Ozark, which we talked about, and Ratchet, um, which is also Netflix, and that's one with. Um, I can picture her, but I can't think of her name. Yes. Um, you know who I'm talking about, Brian, it's right? Her. I yep. can't I can't think of her name. That's going to bug me. How do you think that's going to fall? It's uh, I, I would Sarah, not expect Sarah Paulson is her name. Sarah Paulson. Thank um, you. Yeah. Sarah I Paulson. Would, I would not expect the Mandalorian to win. That. I think the crown is going to win. Yeah. Probably that one. I would bet the crown gets that one as well. I don't think yeah. like just on the the. A, the level of show quality too, like Mandalorian is very cool. Star Wars, I, I just don't think it stacks up to the other. And that's shows what I'm saying. Like either. it's, I love it, but it mm, there's enough that's there to make me think it should not be getting yeah. a Golden Globe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll uh, not yet at least. It'll probably end up going to the Crown. Um, I, to Brian's point, I just did. It was so many people. <laughs> Like are into are, are it's well done. So many of and our moms are I've into seen. that. <laughs> so many of our moms. It like took the place of uh, Downton Abbey. Yeah. Um, and it's British. Go figure. Uh, best performance by an actress in a television series drama: Olivia Coleman in The Crown, who she yeah. played Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, Jodie Comer, um, in Killing Eve. Not one I've seen, but I've seen previews for it. Um, and then Emma Corrin in The Crown. Uh, Laura Linney in Ozark and Sarah Paulson in Ratched. Um, there we have it, Sarah Paulson. Um, uh, uh, do, do what else we got here? Oh, yeah. Best actor in a motion pi picture musical or comedy. Uh, Sasha Baron Cohen in Borat's subsequent movie film. Uh, uh, this next this next person should just be crossed off the list and not not James allowed. Gordon in the prom. Why do you say that, Brian? Because <laughs> I hate James Gordon so much. Yeah, really? I don't even have to see that show, and I know he's terrible. <laughs> yeah, not terrible enough to get it. I mean, he got a nomination. Uh, that just shows you that he didn't have as many that very many people to pick from. I suppose. So um, it is. there you go. Though Hamilton. After that, Lin Hamilton, Manuel. Hamilton, Lin Manuel Miranda. Yeah, uh, yeah Dev I'm Patel, done. the personal history of David Copperfield, and Dev Patel we have seen previously in um, Yesterday. Um, he was in uh, yesterday and he was in uh, Tenant, if I remember. He wasn't. Right. He was in. That wasn't no, him. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, though, you just did a thing. Um, he was in Slumdog, Slumdog Millionaire. Uh, and like, he's. Was I racist? <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying it. Um, Slumdog Millionaire was the first thing that I've ever what known he was in. Guys that was in. Not Dev Patel. Uh, I think it's close, though. <laughs> This is moving on. Andy Samberg and Tom Patel. Springs, but Dev Patel, Patel. Okay, so he's a Patel, but Dev, a Patel. Dev Patel. Patel is also going to be in a movie that I thought would have been released by now, but I guess they're holding it off for COVID reasons. Um, the Green Knight, which is a, a retelling of the Gwen yeah. and the Green Knight. Um, so yeah. I'm really looking forward to that one, and I hope he does good in that too. But yeah, I actually think um. Of these, the next one you're about uh, to say, yesterday. I would I would pick. You you one. saw yesterday, right, uh, Jared? I did see yesterday. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's a mesh Patel. I was not racist. I was just getting last names yeah, combined. Sorry, confused. sorry to call you out on that. That's all right. Jerk. Uh, <laughs> Andy Samberg, Paul Springs, uh, which again, which Brian, I loved. Yeah, I I don't being on Hulu. I feel like. Not enough people would have seen that movie, um, but yeah, it was really good. 
That was a good yeah. movie. Yeah. Um, so there you go. Uh, best actress in a motion picture drama, Viola Davis in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Uh, Andra Day, The United States versus Billie Holiday, which I don't know anything about that one. No, I don't. Not familiar. Uh, Vanessa Kirby in Pieces of a Woman, and I don't know anything about Pieces of a worm- Woman. I do find interesting Vanessa Kirby. Um, the, the last I saw Vanessa Kirby uh, was in... Oh, yeah, it was, Brian. Uh, no. It doesn't it always was, have to come back to the fast absolutely, universe. Absolutely. Uh, in... Uh, you don't even know. You're not a fan. <laughs> You're not a... You don't even know what it's called. It's Hobbs and Shaw. Hobbs and Shaw. <laughs> It's such quality. Uh, How do you call yourself a fan? It's Hobbs and Shaw. Uh, Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. (laughs) Uh, And then you've got Francis McDormand in Nomad Nomad Land and Carrie Mulligan in Promise Young Woman, um, which, again, we'll talk later. Uh, Best best motion picture drama. And again, I don't I, I know. The father, which I, I don't I don't I'm know. Assuming that he's a priest. I'm assuming Anthony Hopkins is a priest. Is that what it is? Uh, um, maybe not though. <laughs> he's done that before. I, I just googled it. I, I don't. Didn't he play? The no, Pope he's not. Movie? He is not a priest. He's a uh, a man refuses all assistance from his daughter as he ages, as he tries to make sense of his changing circumstances. Blah 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 blah. So gotcha. He's not a priest, as far as I know. Uh, Mank. Uh, Nomad Land, Promising Young Woman, and The Trial of the Chicago Seven. Um, what's interesting is is how the Golden Globes divides these categories, mm-hmm. and so they, you know, this one may win, this one may win, but then when you go to the Oscars, Oscars. they're combined uh, back into it. Um, so that's it's interesting to see that change, and and maybe that's a good thing um, to because it gives an opportunity for. Um, for both to to get it, um, best actor in a supporting role in any motion picture, uh, Sasha Baron Cohen in the Trial of the Chicago Seven, um, uh, Daniel K- Kaluuya uh, in Judas and the Black Messiah. I'm this is one so that excited it, for this movie. This is one that's not wide release yet. Um, <clears throat> it'll it'll hit wide release here in this month. Yeah, and uh, um, HBO Max at the same time too. So yeah, you watch it on yeah. That. Um, and then you have Jared Leto in The Little Things, um, which I, uh, Jason and I both saw this week. Uh, Bill Murray on The Rocks. I don't know anything about that one. And Leslie Odom Jr. in One Night in Miami, not Hamilton. One Night in Miami. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, we're going to skip down here a little bit. Where are we going to go here? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Oh, we'll go here. Best motion picture, musical or comedy. Uh, you've got Borat, subsequent Clearly movie film. Slam terrible. Uh, Hamilton, um, which probably you know, the actual winner. <laughs> uh, Palm Springs, uh, music and the prom. You know, I looked up music as we were talking about it for the, the best actress one. Yeah. Not that this is like the be all end all of all things like how good a movie is, but this movie yeah. is nominated for best picture musical or comedy. And it is sitting at a whopping 29% on Rotten Tomatoes. So, Oh, that means it's actually a really good uh, critically know. acclaimed movie. <laughs> I don't I mean, know. 20% the, the audience, audience score, by the way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Audience and like, film they're in, they're in sync with this. The audience and the, the critics are in sync on this one. Oh, well, there you go. The golden there you globes. Go. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, best actress in a supporting role in any motion picture. You got Glenn Close and Hillbilly Elegy. Um, Brian that's the it. one you saw, Brian, wasn't it? I did. Yeah, that you actually did not uh, like so much. I didn't. I Glenn Close was fine. I, but yeah, I don't know. I didn't care for the movie. Um, Olivia Coleman, the father. Jodie Foster in. The Mauritanian, Mauritanian, uh, Amanda Seyfried in Mank and Helena Zengel in News of the World, which she played the little girl um, that was with Tom Hanks the entire yeah. time. So that that's, um, I, you know, props to her for getting the the nomination yeah. on that one. It's uh, her first major 
movie. Um, I don't think she has enough in there to win. I feel and having not seen the father, but because Olivia Coleman is just awesome in literally everything that she's in, I feel like that's yeah, Olivia Coleman for her. Fantastic, <laughs> but yeah, she's pretty fantastic. Uh, best screenplay, motion picture. You've got uh, uh, Emerald Fennell in Promising Young Woman, Jack Fincher in Mank, Aaron Sorkin The Trial of the Chicago Seven, uh, Florian Zeller and Christopher Hampton for The Father, and Chloe Zhao for Nomadland. Um, on that one, hmm. um, and then yeah, I think that's oh, best motion picture animated. The Crudes and New Age. And this this really seems to fall into any any animated movie that was made uh, that was any full length animated movie. That's kind of what like I got from this. Part of the difficulty with, you know, the award season, right, as we're we're rolling into it here, is that the number of movies that actually made it out into the wild last year is significantly less than what we would have expected on the contrary i actually think there's quite a few that i'm not saying that there aren't good stuff here i was surprised by how many i have not seen that are on here that were clearly released in some capacity yeah we missed them somehow (laughs) we missed we missed them somehow um so uh best motion picture animated the crudes and new age onward over the moon soul and Wolf Walkers, what which the heck is that? Wolf Walkers, I've seen previews for on Apple TV. I don't know if it's on Apple TV if it's, or if it's just rentable on that. Um, but it looked very interesting. The oh, the animation a, it looks fantastic. like a storybook, actually. Apple TV, yeah, Plus yeah. The animation Apple. was um, was pretty fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to check that out. That looks pretty cool. So. Anyway, so yeah, that's what we got. I'll um, root for that one. Different... Wolf Walkers. I'll, I'll root for that one. I haven't even seen it. There you it. go. I just like that. Well, the animation, animation, just from the animation alone, I was entertained. Um, um, just seeing the previews. I, I haven't watched the movie yet, but I, I do kind of want to. Um, okay. So yeah, so lots of different nominations, some interesting movies. Um, you know, some that I don't know if they're, if they're there because there's lack of other things to put in there or if they're there because they're actually like legitimately good, um, you know, i.e. James Corden. Um, (laughs) But uh, um, yeah, so those are our nominations for for all this. Um, So let's talk here real quick. I don't want to go into too much detail. Um, A couple weeks, our last show, not last show, show before last, we talked briefly about WandaVision. The two two episodes had come out for WandaVision. well, we've had, we missed talking about it last week, uh, but we'll talk about it here briefly this week. Um, so now we're four episodes into WandaVision, right? Um, there was some uniqueness in the episodes where they showed kind of a sitcom-y feel to it, um, starting in the what would have been the, the 60s. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, then episode two switched into the 70s. Um, Maybe it's 50s, 60s, and then yeah, maybe 50s, 70s. 60s, 70s. Yeah, like maybe that. it is 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, <laughs> and then episode four kind of diverged a little bit from all of it. Um, we kind of get a little back step um, in episode four, and it shows you a little bit more of the world outside the show, which I found very, very interesting. Um, how did you feel about the episodes uh, last week? Personally, I'm glad we got there. Because I think... Did you think we weren't... Like, honestly, come on. No, no, no. I'm just saying, like, I'm glad we got here because I think for a lot of people, you know, their struggle was like, where is this going? And I think it's very... To me, it was very predictable where it's going. You know, like, the, the details, maybe not so much, but the kind of overall, like, what's happening here. Like, after, like, episode two, I kind of sussed out, like, all right, this is something's going on with the particular main character and we're going to find out eventually, but it's nice to be there. And now we see this greater story and you know, now we're in the meat of it and, and I'm looking forward to like, all right, how's this going to go from here? Well, it's interesting. Um, so the very first comment that I see when I look over into chat just now is, uh, is somebody commenting that WandaVision is a miss. And I think that for a lot of people, WandaVision is either a miss or 
you're really into it and you're and you're you are are excited to see what the next steps are what what where's you know, it is from it here? is not possibly a, from a creation of a tv show and, and writing and directing and this overarching story that we're seeing so far it is not possible to me i guess we'll preface with that that <laughs> it is a miss this is top tier everything of a tv show going on right now the fact that they can create these old style sitcoms and and just lean straight into it and not even like the amount of confidence they have to be able to there's do that. no pref preface with it there's and, no they just go and they just jump right into it and and like it's actually kind of like i would watch i, I probably wouldn't because who i wouldn't just sit down and watch a black <laughs> and white show but like these are actually real plot like old and style plot problem, lines though. that they lean it that is not a problem i'm not saying Absolutely it is a not. problem but i'm saying that's that's the problem that people have with it because to me this seems like a situation like if if i bring up to people that i really enjoyed the show breaking bad there are a lot of people that will say they watched the first couple of episodes and they were and they got bored they didn't you know they they didn't want to stick around now if you stick to breaking bad like you will get to the point where that show just explodes and goes bananas for seven That's seasons. A bogus, a bogus argument to me because it's, it's a real argument. No, there are a lot of people that I'm will saying, watch a show. And I don't think don't there is merit to it. To because an interesting part, well, there's are, merit. To there them. are twenty-five minute long episodes. You can't sit you know? and watch. Welcome the, to the age of the cell phone. You know, this, when people get bored, they start. You know, if they this pull is out a the nine, phone and they start doom scrolling. If this on is a TikTok. nine episode series. You have just seen the after the first three episodes, you've seen the first act of the series. This is a continual story. You wouldn't go to a movie. Maybe you would. But if you do, you're stupid. You wouldn't now, go to a movie and judge the contents of the movie solely on the first act of the movie. Let me I ask mean, you I did though, for Borat. I if, as, I, as I said. Now, let well, me, let me ask you this. Movie. Do you feel in a way it does a disservice to itself because you can't binge it? Like if I could watch all four of those episodes, I think people are spoiled sitting, by binging. I think people I think, are spoiled. I think by that's binging. what it comes down to. Yes, I agree with that. I Maybe. think they're spoiled. I I don't. I did not lose anything by the fact that I could only watch the first two episodes and then watch the third one a week later. Like the the question came in, and actually this question is brought up again in chat. Is would it have been better or different had they given us the first three episodes so you could get so you could see where it was going because because the first two episodes don't really take you where it's going yet you're, you're not sure what they're doing they gave you a snippet there at the very end of each one um, but it's not till the third one that you can kind of see it progress a little bit further i don't i for me i don't think it needed to do that i thought the first two episodes were great i was very excited to see the third one i wanted the third one but i but i definitely wasn't I didn't need it to be hooked into the show. Um, and I think that that's. I think we're so used to Marvel going a certain direction that this is totally different from anything else Marvel's ever done. And so a lot of people are just not used to it. And so they're 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 like, oh, this isn't I don't like this. This is I don't like the show. The show's not good because it's not what I want. It's not Marvel the way I know it and want it. Um, but to me, I, I think the way they have done it thus far is exactly the way it needed to be done. I, I, I have enjoyed this show totally and yeah, thoroughly. I'm, I'm okay with the way that it's gone. But I will say that if it took any longer to get to where we are now, I would not be as happy. Like if they if they did like an entire season of like the kind of you know, first episode style, you know, and, and just did, you know, a new one of those. Right? I don't think I'd be as interested. I, but they didn't just, they didn't, I, I'm not saying I'm upset. I'm saying like, I'm glad that, I mean, my first comment was, I'm glad that we're at the point where we are now in episode four. Like, and, I think it's, it's good to, it's a good timing. Like it's, we're I, th here I think now, that, I think that's what it comes down to the timing, the way they did it, the timing was perfect. It's I think fine. the timing and is perfect. And it lines right up. Like you have yeah. first three episodes, first act, next three episodes, middle act, last three episodes or whatever, the 
culmination. Do we, like, do we know if this show is a one and done or will this? It's, be it's a one a, and done. Okay. Is it? I thought there was another that they were planning another one. Yeah, no. This is just one a, and done. All, I think all these little shows are are one and done to get to things. to progress storylines for where the rest of the phases go. Like whether they, I guess Which, whether they come back and revisit these characters in a series format, maybe. But yeah, I I don't think the story. Personally, I I much rather prefer encapsulated miniseries because then is I like it. I think for me as a viewer, you know, it's like you talk about um, Shit's Creek earlier. You know that show is what five seasons, six seasons somewhere, and it's over now. But I have zero desire to start a six season show because to me it's like that's just it's. It's probably great, but it's just too long, and there's yeah. always something new coming out. It's also out. a 30 minute show. It's yeah. not like you're watching six, but six like, seasons mentally, of 10 mentally episodes, it's an hour like long overwhelming. shows. overwhelming. You know, it's like if I were to say, like, you should watch Game of Thrones. It's eight seasons, you know, eight to 10 episodes, an hour a piece. Like, that's a lot of content. I'm just thinking mentally, like, that's going to take me all year to finish that. Like, I'm just not even going to bother. <laughs> and I think a lot of people, they get that it's way. One way. So, like, it's easier well, for me to just pick up like, oh, all right, it's eight episodes. All right. I mean, I could take like a Saturday where it's raining. So you got you like got that end of the spectrum where it's like, don't, why why are they releasing this piecemeal? I want to see it all. But then you have people that are like, I can't see it all because if it's all out there, then I'm too overwhelmed to watch it. But then you get the people that are like, well, if they re- release it one episode at a time, oh, I hate that it's one episode at a time because I, then I have to wait and then it doesn't flow very well and blah, blah, blah. It's You're like, never going to make any, everybody happy. Yeah, there's always going to be you know conflict yeah. in and how it should and i would released. say like if you if you can't stand to wait a week and see how it, if you watch the first two episodes that they released of wandavision and you're like ah oh, i just not going anywhere i don't know if it's for me blah 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 then you should just wait until it's all out there and then watch it because that's the kind of show that you i feel like watch. people that get to that yeah. point in episode two where they're like eh, i think they're like already dead <laughs> like if they don't if they're not into it you know, the chances of them circling back to it, you know, for I mean, that's the reality of how people are like it either interests you or it doesn't. And for some people, like they saw the first two and like, you know, it's going to be real hard for them to, to, to you know, you're going to have to say like, no, like, trust me, like power through another couple episodes if you're not hooked. You know, like, I don't know. What to I mean, tell you. the quality of the performances sure. in general is enough to like at least yeah. keep me hooked. Like the in yeah. some of the yeah. scenes, even if they're not dropping plot bombs on you in the first episode it's been a couple weeks so i'm going to talk like first episode of the season when they're sitting down at the table and the one actress who was on 70s show or whatever is in that and her husband starts falling over choking and she's like oh just stop it just stop it and she keeps repeating that but every time she says it it becomes a little more like sinister and like she's talking directly to wanda and like all that 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 was like a perfect like weird bizarro tense Mm -hmm moment that just encapsulates and he just gets up and walks away it, it's, it's just, just it's the, it's yeah. weird enough and it's it's yeah i i think the performances are great i think the storyline's great um i, I really enjoy it paul bettany is amazing like he's so good he does so much more in this show than they let ever let him do but yeah in the movies and it's great well it's interesting um i i, I like the little uh um anecdote that that he has shared in regards to this um the whole marvel experience for him yeah where he he had walked out of a out of a producer's studio and they told him he was never going to work again he was just he was done in the industry and he literally walked out of the building sat down on the curb and while he sat there he got the phone call from um i I think it was kevin feige or whoever it was that called him john favreau um asking him to play jarvis or to play vision um and and what has Maybe. accomplished since then um i think paul bettany was a, is a great actor yes. like i've enjoyed him the first time i saw him if i remember correctly was a knight's tale and he, good in a knight's tale he a knight's tale such an odd movie a, as well and beautiful so mind well he was really good beautiful in. mind um yep. master and commander is one of my favorite uh movies yep. one of my favorite book series i've got all 20 of them right up here lined up on my shelf um, and he plays one of the characters in that, and it, he's amazing. Um, he actually has a cool little anecdote about after his time, Da Vinci, da Vinci, code, yeah, da Vinci code, the da Vinci self code. flagellating uh, much or whatever. The, the like White the, Walker. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the uh, what you just he had a, he had a nice little anecdote after he was done filming um, 
in uh, Endgame or Infinity War, uh, when he like rapped on a set and his character was killed, he's like, "Okay, everybody, that's a rap," and uh, I'll, I really enjoyed my time, you know, working as the character. And then all the guy, pe- people in the production were like, "Wait, you're not. This is the MCU. You're not like done. You're still gonna <laughs> come back and play the character, here. right? Like, <laughs> you, we got we have more in store for you, kind of thing." And then that was kind of like a big revelation that he had so much, you know, more still left to give in the in the character. So. And I am very excited to see where they take Vision um, in this show, like what ends up happening um, with his character in, in general. Um, now, kind of a side note with WandaVision, it was announced um, just yesterday or today um, that uh, Elizabeth Olsen was asked about a giant, cam- you know, would there be a cameo like on the par with... Um, uh, Luke Skywalker coming back in the Mandalorian. Uh, spoiler alert. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> too late. And and she said she said, yeah, we have one. And she's really excited about it. I, I have sat and tried to think about who it could be this entire time. And I'm not sure. I, I don't know. Magneto. Is that who you think it is? <laughs> that would, so I've he's her I've dad, heard, right? <laughs> Right. Well, yeah. And in, it would introduce in the, the X-Men into the MCU. I mean, that's like a far out, like, I don't even know if it has a chance of happening, but <laughs> I've heard people that's say, Luke Skywalker um, level to be. I've heard people say, um, um, Evan, uh, oh yeah. Evan Peter or, uh, Evan Peters. Yeah. Is that his name? As, as Quicksilver, um, coming back, you know, because of the multiverse type thing. And no, um, no, actually Evan Peters is Quicksilver in the Fox Correct. Um, that's what I'm saying. MC. Oh, oh, oh. Who, I thought you're talking who about what they're saying. I thought you're talking about her no, brother, no, no. Uh, no. Pietro. Okay. No, Evan Peters from Qu- the Quicksilver in the MCU actually making the show huh. uh, crossover. That would be because weird. of it. That wouldn't make sense. Well, it, it's it goes into the concept of the multiverse, um, really at that point, so. um, which we know that lead that this show is leading towards Doctor Strange in the multiverse. Um, so that's and I think uh, um, really, Spider-Man really the better Quicksilver if we're if we're comparing Quicksilvers uh, to me. Oh, he was good. Better yeah, I thought of, it was great. Not necessarily like um, the actors, per, but it just the use of the character that correct. the scene in Days of Future Past uh, in the kitchen with the time oh, they, and they a bottle that, playing. And yeah, 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 it was that they was, do, they do it in Apocalypse, but it's so much better in uh, Days of good. Future Past. But I just I do think that uh, to Brian's point, I think it's going to be something to that route. I don't think it's going to be a character that we've already seen, per se. Um, I don't think it's going to be, you know, well, an actor that we know in the MCU if, right now coming into it. If we're going multiverse and we know or don't we know that or we think this leads into the next Spider-Man, right? Or something. But it does lead into Spider-Man and uh, Dr. Toby McGuire and or. uh Andrew Garfield. Garfield. Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield. Absolutely. Swing into the Absolutely. rescue. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I think it's very possible. I, I think I think it's going to go along the lines of the multiverse. I think something from the multiverse. Dude, Toby is could like look like his character from. Well, they're out of the black and white now, I guess. But the pleasant, his Pleasantville character. But he's <laughs> Peter Parker. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, I think that's the route it's going to go. Um, and they haven't said what episode it's going to be. But they've said that it's it, that we are going to see a big cameo like that, and that yeah. Elizabeth Olsen is very very excited about the cameo. Um, kind of a side note too, um, in regards to people showing up in other shows, um, Don Cheadle has confirmed that War Machine um, is going to be in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, so we're going to okay. get him uh, in that as well. So lots of good stuff here still happening with Marvel um, and everything uh, that that we have with Marvel. Okay, movie time, kids. Movie time. Um, and we promise we'll be super, uh, we'll be super convenient super. and slow, or not slow, fast yeah. in these. Um, okay, first, let's talk uh, Promising Young Woman. I saw Promising Young Woman. It is available for rent. Um, we saw it on Apple TV, but I believe it's available elsewhere for rent as well. It was a $20 rent. Um, so we did we did see that um, Promising Young Woman f- um, has stars Carrie Mulligan um, and then it has multiple other side 
um, cameos, if you will. Um, Adam uh, Adam Brody is in it. Um, Clancy Brown, Jennifer Coolidge, um, uh, Laverne Cox, um, uh, Max Greenfield from uh, uh, New Girl, um, Allison Brie, uh, Molly Shannon. So there's a lot of different cameos within this movie. And it's the story of a of a woman who um, had a very traumatizing past, uh, her and her best friend, uh, to the point. Um, well, I won't I won't go into detail because it, it does kind of ruin a, a plot point um, in it. And because of this traumatizing past, um, she is seeking revenge on people who have. Um, uh, wronged her or who are looking to wrong other people um taking advantage of 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 uh women essentially um uh, from a uh a sexual standpoint um particularly women who are intoxicated um she she goes in she has gone into bars or she goes into bars um acts like she's very very wasted or um, uh, drunk or, or high or whatever. And um, these men offer to take her home, right? The whole, they're going to be super nice guys and they take her home. Well, they end up ne- not taking her home and they'll, you know, try to take advantage of her at the house. And so she's, she's seeking revenge against these, these guys. Um, I, and that's really kind of the, I, that sounds very basic and it's very simple. Um, uh, plot but i don't want to go any more in the plot because quite frankly anything else is going to start ruining the the points the storylines uh, of this um but she ends up starting to take revenge out on people who were part of the time when um when she was her her traumatizing experience when she was younger um she was in med school at the time um and so some of the other med students some of the teachers uh, connie britton is in this i forgot about, about her she's in it um friends of hers at that time like not in med school but like outside of med school friends of hers um they didn't um they didn't support her the way that she should have been supported i mean so she seeks revenge against all of these different people um that's the gist of this movie okay uh i i enjoyed this movie quite a bit um there were definitely some uh plot twists that i did not expect there were things um did not go the way you think they're going to go um and then the ending itself is very much not what you expect it to do um and so throughout the entire movie I really felt that you think something's going one direction, but it brings you back a different way. And to me, that was um, entertaining and uh, really kept me hooked throughout the entire movie. Uh, I thought Carrie Mulligan did a great job um, as the main uh, main character. Um, uh, the other supporting characters throughout it, um, Alison Brie, um, I really enjoyed her. Um, uh Oh, what's his name? Uh, Christopher Mintz Plass. Um, he was in it oh. um, for for a period of time. So she's the only one that's in it exclusively. And then everybody else is just cameo based um, throughout the, the entire show. Um, Laverne Cox did a, a great job. She plays her boss at a coffee shop and their friends at, at this coffee shop. Um, and it just uh, really well done uh, from that standpoint. Um, I understand why uh, the screenplay is nominated for Golden Globe and I get why it was because, again, the twists and turns that they take you on throughout the entire movie um, are very, very cool. Um, It's it definitely makes you. It makes you think and that's what it's supposed to do, Um, you know, the the. You know, we had the what last year, two years ago, three years ago, uh, the Me Too movement. that you know women are not being heard uh in regards to their you know if they're um sexually assaulted or raped or whatever the case may be and and they're not believed um and this this takes that idea and that theme um throughout the entire movie um 
so that that it's it's interesting to watch and and to see what ended up happening to Carrie Mulligan, what ended up happening to her her best friend, um, and how people's lives are affected um, at different times during um, these scenarios and these situations that that people get get put into. Um, and it, it basically goes back to the idea of, of just because a woman happens to be drunk and um, intoxicated does not mean that she knows what's going on and what that she is consent. coherent and consenting yeah. to the situation that she's in. And so um, that's I think that's the the main point that this that this goes through um, with this movie. But um, I do recommend it. I, I think it was I think it was really well done. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I had heard good things about it uh, prior to you yeah. seeing it. I, I wasn't sure if we had planned on like if anybody had, of us had planned on watching it or whatever. So I didn't rent it. But um, yeah. And obviously yeah, it's it up was, for awards uh, and such. So, yeah, very well done, very well done movie. Um, and so I, I, uh, you know, it's interesting. The 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 director of this, um, <laughs> she kind of she kind of ticked off people a little bit. I, maybe that's not the right word, but so she commented about the revenge concept and the revenge movies. Um, and she particularly brought up John Wick and the idea <laughs> that this guy goes on a revenge because of somebody doing something to his dog and he goes they and killed a puppy the they deserved it yeah right and so he he goes through all this this process and these movies are based off this this whole concept of revenge her movie is also based off of revenge but it it's it's not it's not this go shoot him in the face and and you know it's not yeah the same thing and so it doesn't she was commenting I, I don't remember the exact wording but it's essentially meaning not all revenge movies have to go the way of john wick um and so that's I imagine there's probably something she was responding to or people out there saying, like, I don't know whether it's unbelievable that this kind of thing is it, that there's a it movie depicting yeah, this or remember. something like that. Like, well, John Wick can go off and do it because the dog got killed, but this lady can't go off and do it because of, you know, her traumatizing experience and stuff. Right. Like that, so. mm -hmm. Right. But it was a, it was a very interesting uh, movie. So I highly recommend it. If you get a chance to see it, um, I say go for it. Watch. A promising, promising young woman. Uh, cool. So there we have. Nice. Yeah, uh, Jason, you yes, and too. I saw the movie uh, "The Little Things" mm -hmm. um, on HBO Max. Uh, share with us about "The Little Things." Yeah, so "The Little Things," as you said, is on HBO Max as well as in uh, theaters limited currently, um, and it's got a pretty, you know, pretty big cast. Uh, it stars primarily uh, Denzel Washington. Uh, Rami Malek and Jared Leto. Um, so some pretty big, you know, high power names involved in the cast. Um, and it basically, you know, kind of primarily revolves around Denzel Washington's character, uh, Joe Deke, Deacon, uh, who's, uh, he's like a deputy sheriff from a, a small county uh, outside of Los Angeles. And he kind of uh, gets sent on a We'll say like a errand task to to go to the the greater Los Angeles County to to kind of pick something up, um, you know, some evidence or or, or whatnot, or and um, you know along the way he's kind of uh, it's clear that people know him in in the Los Angeles County police scene, and uh, you know not not apparently always in a popular way, uh, and you kind of quickly unfolds into him getting involved in uh the greater plot of the movie which is there is uh this series of of murders that have occurred by a serial killer that uh Rami Malek uh his character as a uh, kind of a lead detective has been uh you know heavily investigating and you know the public is very concerned because it's you know multiple people have been killed you know these you know, uh, young women have gone missing and, you know, it's a big high profile event. And, you know, he's kind of there just to, to pick something up and, you know, very quickly he, he gets um, kind of drawn into this and you, you begin to find out that he, he used to work in this, you know, uh, precinct or, or whatever you want to call it. And, um, you know, he has, at some point decided to kind of uh not not retire but to to kind of move out of the you know sort of big city scene and into a a, a quieter less you know we'll say stressful environment of this kind of smaller 
you know, uh, sheriff position, deputy sheriff position. Um, and, and so when he kind of comes back into this situation, you know, some people are happy to see him and others are not so happy. Um, but he ends up kind of tagging along uh, as one of these uh, events is being investigated and very quickly, you know, kind of gets sucked in uh, because of his prior um, kind of renown. He was known to be a good investigator and detective. And so the the person played by Rami kind of intriguingly says, oh, this guy was used to be some big, you know, hotshot or whatever. All right, well, let's see what you can dig up. And, and it kind of goes from there. Um, the story is, is to me, I thought it was really interesting. Um, I, I liked, uh, Denzel Washington's character in this. Um, I thought he was pretty cool, cool guy. And, um, eventually you come to meet, uh, Jared Leto's character who ends up being one of the, uh, like main suspects at some point. Um, and he kind of plays a crazy looking, uh, Unabomber-ish kind of guy, um, uh, and it's just um it's it's a it's a good kind of cop uh detective story uh and a lot of it is involving him kind of uh digging into his backstory and and as you go along the movie you learn more and more about uh his past Denzel Washington uh as as this detective and and you find that these cases that are occurring you know uh have familiarity to to what he has previously investigated um uh rami malik i thought did a, a pretty good job uh at first i i didn't know if i was going to like him just uh, as a character but he kind of grows on you um and there's other side characters that that get involved uh in the precinct the you know mortician um I'm trying to think if that's let's see we have uh, Joris uh, Jarkski is a detective that kind of plays a small part. Uh, Glenn Moore shows Captain Harry Davis is kind of the the boss guy that doesn't really like Denzel Washington's character being around. Um, overall, uh, it's it's an interesting movie. Uh, I I did enjoy it. Uh, I don't want to talk too too much on plot. Um, because it's it gets um you know like you can you can spoil some stuff i don't know jared what a it's kind of like a mystery you, right so you don't want to it's, it's kind of you know like the um obviously you know you know murders are happening and you know they kind of you know they're investigating these these people and in, in particular at one point it, it boils down to jared leto's character as a, a prime suspect so they there's a lot of like observation and, and, you know, you're kind of waiting to see, you know, what's going to potentially occur and, and how, uh, you know, if it is him, how they're going to identify, yeah. is it him? Is it somebody else or whatever? This is kind of like a movie, a style of movie that they'd actually don't really make too much anymore. Um, cause like you used to have movies like, uh, silence of the lambs or kiss the girls or the bone collector, or like speaking of just like Denzel Washington style movies. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting. It's an interesting kind of throwback, I guess, to to that era of like yeah, nineties, early to late nineties, sort of you know detective thriller. But now all that kind of stuff is on TV. This now. actually takes place in the nineties. Oh, it okay. Does. Well, there it's you go. Yeah. Piece. It's, it's, it's like, meta. Yeah. I didn't know it was so yeah. meta. It's yeah. like ninety. Yeah. I, I would peg it at like ninety five, ninety six. Just okay. well, they, some of the they, it opens in nineteen ninety. Like 1990 itself, so I don't think it's that far into the 90s. I think it's I think it's 1990, 1991, maybe somewhere. In there. Um, but uh, yeah, I I enjoyed this movie. Um, uh, my wife did not enjoy it as much as I did. Um, uh, it was a little slower for her than what she wanted. Um, so the, you know, keep that in mind. This is not a fast paced movie. This is not a um, uh, this is not a um, car chase high speed you know thriller type thing yeah. um it is very much it, it, the title is very fitting um it's details it's all about the details in this mm -hmm. movie and paying attention to the details and that's what denzel washington did he paid attention to the details and that's what he all he he was talking to rami malik about is is and he comments it's about the little things 
And he said, so always, always ask about the little things. And so that's what this this movie is about. Those tiny details that lead through the story and get get it to where it's going to go. Um, so with that said, I, I thought it was really well done. Um, Denzel was top notch as always. Um, uh, Rami Malek, um, he was a character kind of to Jason's point um, that you first kind of start off thinking that you're not going to like the guy. Um, but then he actually, he, he grows on you and he goes a, a certain path. Um, Jared Leto plays a, a creepy dude really well. <laughs> well, so uh, of the three in the cast, Jared Leto's the only one that was nominated for a Golden Interestingly Globe, right? enough. So interestingly enough, like, yeah, deserved. I, I thought, I mean, I'm not going to say it wasn't deserved. Um, Does he have more meat than the other two to not? No, yeah. he doesn't. Yeah, I don't know. Is, if he, yeah, it's hard um, to I, say. I would probably would have gone with Rami Malek, maybe. Uh, but but Rami Malek and Denzel Washington are the main characters. So he got Jared Leto got a supporting role nod. So, yeah, um, I can see from a supporting role that's, you know, if, if he's going up against other supporting actors, um, I'm not sure why Denzel or Rami did not get an, an actor nod, because I thought both of them did really well. Um, I thought they. Uh, I, it was believable. Um, and that's what was interesting with actually with Rami Malik is um, I think of Rami Malik. I think of um, um, what's e- exuberant. That's not the right word I want, but um, um, kind of out there. Um, you know, when you see him, Freddie Mercury, right? Um, I also think of him in uh, uh, the Twilight movie series, um, his role in that. He was. It, it, he was a he was a proud to have never watched those eccentric <laughs> that's what it, that's what i want I he's a little eccentric in some of his his portrayals and different things he's not in this um he plays a down-to-earth family man um he is a a little cocky it's, um uh it's interesting detective. Because their their styles as detectives are very distinct yeah you know like rami malik's character is kind of like that kind of new age you know there this is the age where like things like dna and you know like fingerprints are done in like computer scanning so it's kind of like the new age of fighting crime in, but it's like, still old school <laughs> like, but when you, like when they, they went and talked still, to the one guy yeah. about the the fingerprints and he's all like yeah. it's gonna take another week to get back and these 12 <laughs> trigger points on the th- on the fingerprint you know you need 21 and blah blah, blah. you get it any uh, very... scenes where he tells somebody to keep enhancing the the thing enhance no enhance. no, enhance. no. <laughs> No, it's, it's more ground in that. But like okay. you could see like his style is definitely like he knows the modern kind of he's in, he wants to be in front of the cameras. He's talking to the press, telling him we're going to catch this guy and you can trust us on this. He's Commissioner you know. Gordon. Yeah. Yeah. And then you've got <laughs> and then you you've got, got Batman got... in the background doing the, you know, like that's the intuition. Like mm, that doesn't yeah. look right. Yeah. You know, kind of, uh, you know, deep, uh, you know, detective work. Yep. But personally, I would recommend this film. Um, I thought it was I thought it was really well done. Um, it's on HBO Max. So if you have HBO Max, you can watch it. Um, it is it is free on there. Um, check it out. Um, I thought it was well worth the watch. Um, I, I enjoyed think it's it quite only a bit. available there like there. It's like 30 days they're released on like HBO. But there's only yeah, there's a there's a limited window to watch it there before it you know, goes off and eventually yeah. gets pressed onto a Blu-ray <laughs> and, and yeah. then it'll come back in like a year or two. So yeah, uh, I, if, if you have HBO max, I, I, I throw it on the list for the next, you know, couple of weeks to make sure you, you give it a whirl. Yeah, I definitely do. Um, I thought it was well worth it. So anyway, there you have it. The little things. So two, two uh, promising movies, uh, a promising young woman and the little things promising young movies. Yeah, promising new movies. That's right. Um, man, with that being said, thanks, guys. Thanks for being here. Jason, thanks for being here, buddy. As thanks, always. Thanks for putting up with Jared's Brian, sleepy self. Brian, I'm not I'm awake now. He's I was awake sleepy now, yeah, at yeah. the beginning, but I'm I'm we awake now. Full I got of it now. Adrenaline and yeah. My water's what's, keeping what's in me that going. water bottle there. Uh, well, you know. Jared. Uh Brian, <laughs> you're I'm glad it. you're here with us, buddy. <sighs> Seriously. Don't leave us. Stay with us here, man. Stay with us. Uh, and you guys watching this show right now, 
all over the world. We appreciate it. Thank yes, you. Worldwide. God worldwide. Bless. We are it's, worldwide. It's we like four in the morning it. for some of you crazy. Thanks people. to the magic of the internet. Yeah. Uh, check us out on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, all of it. We're everywhere. Um, we are excited to be here. We love you guys. And uh, we'll be back next week with another episode of the Noodlecast, episode 121 to be specific. Uh, and we will check you guys later. Have fun. Be good. Stay out of trouble.